As the pandemic unleashes a dark reality, hospitals all over the country raise alarm over the shortage of oxygen cylinders and other supplies. With emergency rooms overflowing at hospitals, many health experts are sharing tips to help manage the infection at home. As the coronavirus attacks the lungs and respiratory system the hardest in most cases, here are some breathing exercises that can help your lungs work more efficiently. First, lip breathing can allow your airways to open up more, facilitating a steady flow of oxygen into the lungs. Sit up straight, breathe in slowly and deeply through the nose, purse your lips, breathe out through the mouth in a steady, controlled way. Repeat this three to five times in a sitting and the entire exercise can be done three times a day. Diaphragmatic or belly breathing is an exercise recommended by the American Lung Association to improve the rate at which your lungs expand and contract. This exercise focuses on strengthening the diaphragm muscle. You can do this sitting up or lying down. Place your hands lightly on your stomach. Breathe in through the nose, paying attention to how far your stomach rises. Breathe out through pursed lips, again noting the contraction of your stomach. Repeat the same exercise trying to get the stomach to rise higher than it did with the previous breath. You can do this breathing flow for up to 15 minutes at a time. Proning or prone breathing has been recommended by the health ministry as a way to improve breathing and oxygenation. As the largest part of your lungs sits on your back, it can be helpful to practice deep breathing while lying on your stomach. Begin by lying on your stomach. Rest your head on your hands or turn it over on any side. Close your lips and place your tongue on the roof of your mouth. Breathe in through the nose and slowly exhale from your mouth. Try to focus on your stomach pushing down and going up as you breathe. You can add some pillows under your chest to make this more comfortable. According to medical guidelines, you can prone for up to 16 hours a day in multiple cycles if it helps your breathing. Desperate cries for help on social media as demand for oxygen keeps increasing with more and more people contracting COVID-19. Few good Samaritans are coming together for help. The PM assured that all steps are being taken to ensure that demand for oxygen is being met. Kendra Sarkar, Rajya Sarkar, Private Sector, Sabhe ki puri koshish hai ki har jarurat man ko oxygen mile. But the situation on the ground is desperate with state governments sending SOS after SOS as hospitals run out of oxygen. Why is the country facing an oxygen shortage while trying to fight the second COVID wave? Are more patients reporting low oxygen levels than in the first phase? According to the National Clinical Registry for COVID-19, shortness of breath is the most common symptom among hospitalized patients at 47.5%, compared to 41.7% during the first wave. Members of the National COVID-19 Task Force have said that data shows that 54.5% of hospital admissions during the second wave required supplemental oxygen a 13.4% increase compared to September November last year because in terms of the number of patients who need oxygen and the supply of oxygen that is well balanced but if you suddenly start hoarding oxygen if you start using it when you don't need it then obviously you will have a deficiency which is self created rather than uh, actually existing so shortness of breath and low oxygen levels 
are caused because of the way in which coronavirus affects our lungs and respiratory tract. The virus infects the epithelial cells in the lungs whose function is to protect the tract from pathogens. The body's immune response to fight the infection in the lung leads to inflammation and it negatively impacts oxygen flow. Fluids also build up in the lungs due to the infection and both these factors make it difficult to breathe. Although low oxygen levels don't always manifest as difficulty in breathing. It's called silent hypoxia. Oxygen levels dip below normal but there are no visible symptoms. Hence, one of the most important factors monitored in a COVID-19 patient are SpO2 or oxygen saturation level in blood. The oxygen level should not go below 94. But even at that level, doctors say, a patient does not require to take oxygen. The body oxygen should suffice. Therefore, in those individuals who are having an oxygen saturation of 93, 94, there is no need to really take high oxygen or high flow oxygen just to maintain your saturation at 98, 99. It is not going to be of any benefit. In moderate cases of shortness of breath and low SpO2 levels between 90 to 94 percent, oxygen is given through nasal prongs, masks or masks with reservoir bags. The aim is to bring saturation to 92 to 96 percent. In severe cases when patients are diagnosed with severe pneumonia, acute respiratory distress and sepsis, the recommended oxygen therapy is 5 litres per minute. And depending on the condition of the patient, the protocol states that high-flow nasal cannula oxygen therapy or non-invasive ventilation can be considered. While efforts are on to ramp up the oxygen supplies, the old adage rings true yet again. Prevention is better than cure. Hospitals are running out of beds with a sharp spike in COVID cases. Government and doctors are advising those testing positive to stay in isolation at home rather than rush to hospitals if they have mild symptoms. Track your fever and oxygen levels regularly. This six-minute walk test recommended by the Government of India helps you assess your oxygen levels. Here's what it is. Check your oxygen level. Walk for six minutes in your room. Check your oxygen level again. If there is a drop of four points or more, lie face down on belly to improve oxygen level. Repeat the walk test two or three times in a day. If level drops more than four points after walk, contact your doctor.